I am now, yet again, filming another interesting collection of items. The first thing I am going to show you, because they dry out very quickly, is borage flowers. These are borage flowers, also known as Borago Afikinawas, or Afikinawas, or as many Americans pronounce it, Afikinawas, or Afikinawas. Um, that's just like a common American pronunciation, but there they are, commonly known as blue borage flowers. So there's a recipe for a carrot soup garnished with blue borage flowers in a cookbook someone just gave me. Before I show you that recipe, I'm going to show you the Wikipedia page for the plant, which is in the Borag Inaceae family, or the Borage Inaceae family, depending on how you pronounce your G. And um, the recipe includes certain other ingredients, including carrots. We all know what carrots are. And creme French, or creme French. Uh, I actually, in another tab, because like I said when I make a video, I always have to have all these tabs open. Open a tab about how to pronounce. Yes, seriously, how to pronounce creme French. And he said you could say creme French in French, but if you spoke English or American, you could say creme French, basically. I'm sure I'm still not pronouncing it right, but he actually said if you speak English or American. And that was, um, Julian Mikhen. Julien Mikhen. I'm sorry, my French pronunciation is awful, but anyway, you got the borage flowers, the creme French and some carrots and um with that um you can make a soup and I'm going to show you the recipe for the soup which is in this cookbook that somebody just gave me because since I started making videos about cookbooks I have been inundated with piles of cookbooks from people who either know me or don't know me and have seen my videos and requests from people who either know me and don't know me I mean or don't know me to promote their cookbooks so before I show you the carrot borage flour and creme french recipe I'm going to really quickly show you some of the cookbooks I received. Um, this is one I've had for quite some time. But it has a recipe that I can make with an ingredient my boyfriend came home with today. It is a recipe I made during the COVID pandemic to try it out. And it is this. Basically, shredding raw horseradish into beef stock with salt and pepper. At the time, I didn't have anything to shred it with, so I chopped it up. It was um, not the best meal I ever made, so I was going to try to um, take the horseradish. Where is the horseradish? There's the horseradish. It's right here in front of me. Where's the horseradish? <laughs> this is horseradish. I was going to take the horseradish and actually like grate it with like a cheese grater or a vegetable grater or something and see if it would taste better with actual grated horseradish into boiling broth, not like chopped horseradish into warm broth, which is basically what I made during the pandemic lockdown. It wasn't very good, but apparently copies of this book that I've had for years sell for a hundred dollars on the internet, and they're interesting. They're interesting. It's supposed to be like simple and cheap recipes, but it has recipes including things like fish roe. Maybe that's like what the fisherman's wife would make. Caraway soup. 
I made that one too with gluten-free flour and macaroni. That's why the page is bookmarked. Isn't that an interesting cookbook? It's from like the 1970s. Let me see if I can find the page. Um, Nineteen sixty. Copyright nineteen sixty. Very interesting. So, um this is what I got from a neighbor who died, unfortunately, because based on what she wrote in it, I wish I had known her in real life because she like annotated all of her cookbooks and everywhere where there was a recipe that said pork she crossed it out and wrote beef. Let me see if I can find a page where that's been done. It's like, like there's pages like folded over. There's a few pages that are like stained with sauce from numerous times of the recipe being used. There's things that are that are marked with the word by and circled. Where's the page where I'm flipping through this backward? It is um see look at this. She like annotated the, the cookbook. At first I thought she did it for herself, but then I saw um instructions indicating that she did it so somebody else could cook for her. Where's one that says, um, um, beef instead of pork? I'm sorry, I'm like flipping through these books forward and backwards, but I look at my pretty board flowers while I flip through this book. Here, instead of mushroom, she wrote sub celery. See that? She like annotated the cookbooks. Perhaps a mushroom allergy? Isn't that interesting? I swear there's a page in here where it says, um, there are actually many pages. I should have bookmarked them before recording this video where it says beef instead of pork. Anyway, um, I cannot find this page right now. I'm sure I could find it here. Here we go. In the, um, in the index. Okay, there's like a ham skillet on page 46. Let me see if she crossed out ham. These are mostly healthy recipes, so yeah, there she wrote. See that? Substitute meat. This is one of the pages. Sorry I had to look at the index to find this, but this is like a healthy cookbook made by Campbell's, so most of the recipes actually don't have red meat or pork, but here she wrote substitute meat, substitute the ham, and above it she wrote no, and here she wrote no above the pork, and she wrote equals beef. The way she wrote her E's is similar to the way Murray wrote his E's. Anyway, isn't that interesting? It's like annotated, but I received like a bunch of cookbooks like this from this person who died, and their family was like giving away the cookbooks in a box in the road, but they said that I could come into her house and get a video of the inside of her house and how she'd been living and like the floors were rotted out and she'd been cooking on a wood-burning stove. I'm not sure if she had electricity or not. And it was like a few blocks away from my house. So I think this one came from the same house, but it might have come from another neighbor, but see there's those like stained pages. Anyway, my boyfriend went through all of my cookbooks while I was gone. I can't find my neighbor's cookbook I've been talking about because I do have a copy of the old black and white one he made years ago. But I have found these, which uh, apparently came from another neighbor. And by the way, this one, I want to mention something about this one and this one. Both the Viennese cookery and the Chili Madness cookbooks have a recipe that say that you must use Bermuda onions. Which brings me to this, which was advertised as an unopened 
seed packet of Bermuda onions on like either eBay or Etsy or something. What arrived was an opened empty packet. I'm not sure if they, and by the way, this is from like the 1930s. This is like a hundred year old seed packet. I think what happens is they thought that the seeds inside were bad and the person who ordered it only wanted the packet. I was hoping to sprout the hundred year old seeds. If anyone has one of these that's either unopened or even partially opened with a few seeds, please, please, please contact me. I was just horrified when I got this bag with the packet opened when in the picture it had said it was unopened and showed an unopened seed packet. I said, where's the seeds? Where's the seeds? Where's my Bermuda onion seeds? Because even the ones they grow in Bermuda now, which can basically only be found in Bermuda, have like crossed with like modern onions and they're not like so elongated. They're like rounder. They look different. I wanted the actual original heirloom variety of seeds so I could make recipes from my old cookbooks. And one of them actually specifies you must use Bermuda onions for this. Another type of onions will not suffice. So, I do not live in Montana. I was going to use this shirt um, underneath these books, but I looked it up and it actually has a $20 resale value, which I have opened in a tab to show you. Like I said, I literally, 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 at this point, I'm Googling everything. There it is. See, $20 on used Poshmark Bella Canvas Top Lake New. It's that shirt. Um, so instead of using that for a backdrop, I used this, but I accidentally covered the tag, so I can't show you what it is. This one only has a $10 resale value because, of course... I, um, Googled it too. Look, I don't want somebody to come out in my video and say, Oh my God, you're ruining your $300 Pendleton blanket by filming a video with food spilling on it. Okay, people, this is here on top of my washer and dryer because I saw moths landing on it and realized I needed to wash it with some special soap and perhaps even buy some mothballs. So please don't worry about my Pendleton blanket <laughs> being ruined in this video. Um, magic bullets are dangerous because you screw it in this way to screw the top into the bottom and also um, neutral bullets are also dangerous for the same reason and then you screw it in this way to start the blending and then you screw it that way to make the blending stop, but other than, you know, people being injured by the blade coming loose inside and like flying out at them through the plastic, there's the issue where you are screwing it, or I mean unscrewing it, like the whole thing in the same direction as you unscrew this from this, which is like, just like, dangerous, and they should like make one that, you know, one screws one way and the other screws the other way so no one can, like, do that. Because I've, like, gone to unscrew it while it's, like, you know, plugged into electricity and running and had this piece screw off from this piece and the, the, the liquid start going into, like, the electrical appliance when I'm just trying to unscrew it. I'm terrified every time I use this thing. <laughs> but it is an essential kitchen appliance. Um... So, um, in this bag, there is a bunch of stuff that my boyfriend got at the Arcata Farmer's Market, including Pacific Dulse. Pacific Dulse. Devil Area Mollus. Devil Area Mollus. This is the first time I've ever read the scientific name for Pacific dolls, but that's really interesting. I'm, I'm sorry about my, my, my hand shaking here. I'm going to have to hold my phone with my right hand and record with my left hand. I'm extremely sorry. It's getting worse. Pacific dolls. There's a seaweed. Ugh, I'm sure I could make something like a, um, something like a, like, miso broth, or like a, like a, um, I like a miso broth. Let me see what else I have and I'll show you what kind of broth I could make. I'm recording just to let you know. Oh, show me the, show me the, uh, those. You got some magnets and cherries. 
That's a cow and a moon. Cherries. You got cherries. Okay, put them somewhere else. I don't want my books getting wet. The bag is wet. It says I'm on a... I am a dreamer. I am a dreamer. And there's a cow. Hi. Make the cow jump in over the moon. And the cow is going around the moon. Yeah, the cow is going around the moon the wrong way. <laughs> Just one second, people. Okay, the cat's coming in. Um, What's going on with her shoe? What's going on with her shoe? I'm tired. Can we tie it? I'm recording a video and my phone is just set down. Let me tie your shoe really quickly. Okay, while I tie Evelyn's shoe and my phone is recording just blackness, I was going to say you could make something like like a miso broth, which is made with dashi, which is usually made with bonito flakes. Excuse me, can I step by you in the hallway? I think I have a bag of bonito flakes in my room so I can show everybody what bonito flakes are. And I'm sorry you're just seeing a blur. I know you're going to leave, but I'm in the middle of recording a video and I need my bonito flakes. Here. here, let me give you some bonito flakes. Just eat them. You might want to grab some leaves and put them on some leaves or just eat them plain. People actually just like eat them as a snack. Totally safe to eat raw. It's a dried preserved fish. Goodness gracious, I'm sorry about the um, interruption. My family is going to um, the neighbor's house. One of the neighbors, oh hey, when you're at the neighbor's house, get me some cilantro. I need it for this recipe. Oh my gosh. Did you hear me about the cilantro? Yeah, um, if you're not back soon though, I'm actually going to walk down there and get some cilantro because I, I want to make it like soon. But you could also like run me back some cilantro and go back over there or send Eugene on his bike with some cilantro. Somehow, in some way, shape, or form, I will be getting some cilantro. But you could use this dulce, or dulce, um, I guess you could pronounce it dulce. Sorry for being all about the pronunciations right now, but with this, which is bonito flakes, I know it's all in Japanese, but this was an Amazon order. Um, they use um, kombu seaweed and this to make dashi, which is the base broth for miso soup. And then they add the miso, but you can also make a lot of other things with dashi. And as you heard me telling my boyfriend, these are safe to eat raw. Like They put little curls of them on sushi. Um, and also sometimes borage flowers to um, garnish it, which I've done. And it's um, really high in umami flavor. It's actually really good. You should try that if you haven't done it. You could also just boil it by itself if you don't have any seaweed. Or um, boil seaweed by itself if you don't eat fish and make a similar tasting broth, basically. They both taste like similar and they kind of complement each other when they're mixed. So, um, while I talk about garnishing, I'm going to tell you a story. I used to go to a restaurant that was extremely expensive. And most of the time, I didn't get a meal there. I would just go to the bar and get a drink and talk to people when I wanted to it's socialize with somebody. SpongeBob. SpongeBob has crashed. <laughs> my video. <laughs> um, there was a SpongeBob sing-along event that my boyfriend took our children to today, and I closed my tab about that because I wasn't going to talk about it, but I was explaining to somebody what SpongeBob was and why some of their songs were, um, well, 
look up the lyrics to even just Spongebob's theme song, or watch a few minutes of Spongebob if you've never seen it. Um, they live in the, the, the soggy bottom in in the the rock bottom house or something it's like there's, there's not like one line of this show that isn't a dirty joke that only adults would understand but children love it so they had the spongebob sing along and they had like these printed out pictures for children to color and they even gave all the children sponges and sticks and markers to make their own little spongebobs <laughs> All right, so there used to be a restaurant called the Avalon Restaurant, and um, the owner tried to um, um, open up a liquor store, and somebody burned it to the ground, so it didn't happen. She ended up closing her restaurant. I don't know what happened to her, but she, like me, was from New Jersey. And at one point, she told me that she needed borage flowers to make candied borage flowers. And I had actually never heard of this before. She showed me, like, a few of them their chef had made, but they only had, like, like ten borage flowers, not enough for, like, serving a whole restaurant dinner with candied borage flowers. They just made it to, like, make it for an example, like, to try it. But you take, like, powdered sugar and melt it, and very carefully lower a very fresh borage flower that you just removed from the spiny base, is this is the other thing I'm going to mention, is that you have, and look, see how much, how they're bolting? I guess the ones that I put in water here might be a better example, but uh, they're bolting too. You have to take a very fresh flower, like this one that is starting to wilt, might be already too old, but it would still work, and very carefully dip it into this powdered sugar, melted powdered sugar, and take it out right away and put it on a screen to dry. And it, like, hardens and becomes like a candied like, thin, like, paper-thin, like, nail-polish-thin layer on the surface of the flower, and they use these in, like, fine dining restaurants to garnish desserts. So, at one point, the owner of this restaurant asked me, because I told her that boards had gone to seed in my garden and spread all over my yard, which is true and happens every year because I let it, I told her I had borage, and she asked me if she could buy some of my borage flowers, like, really fresh. Like, I cut them and put them in the car and drive to the restaurant before they start to curl up like this. So, the recipe that I'm going to make with probably not these borage flowers, because the time it will take to boil the carrots, because I'm, I'm actually, like, mildly allergic to raw carrots. I would only be able to eat a few slices of these, but I can eat them when they're boiled down and cooked very well. Um, the, in that time, the flowers would wilt, but the recipe I'm going to make from this cookbook that somebody just gave me, because after I mentioned that my friend was writing an Indian cookbook, of course other people started giving me Indian cookbooks, but this one is actually food from, from Persia. Specifically, it's from Persian Zoroastrian people who moved to India, to Bombay. And it starts out by telling you, like, the entire history of the Zoroastrian people and their migration to India and in some cases to the USA and um, all the people have tasted the recipes. It's really, really, really detailed and um, even shows like the, the location of where they came from and the places they migrated to and even has like, old family pictures from the author's family from, like, over a hundred years ago. See that? And every single recipe has a story, like, her two aunts made the recipe two different ways, and this is a picture of a old cookbook from 1958 of, um, Parsi recipes, because the, the Persian, um, People are called Parsi people, and there's her maternal grandmother's on her father's knee in this picture. Like, look, see, it's really, really, really detailed. And then it goes into recipes, and every single recipe has, if I can even get to the part with the recipes, every single recipe has a story. See, every single recipe has a story. It talks about, like, their culture and what it was like in their household. But what I thought was interesting was, 
Well, I thought that one was interesting because it uses the Aj wine seed, and I used to um, buy that in San Francisco because no one sells it here. I don't know if they sell it here now. At the time, they didn't sell it here and use it in cooking, but somewhere in this book, because as you can see, I have numerous pages bookmarked, just like all my other ones. Um, already, after having this only for a few days, there is carrot and fresh coriander soup. Fresh coriander, they're talking about is cilantro. Um, cilantro and coriander are the same plant. In the USA, they call the weave cilantro and the seeds coriander. In other countries, that is not so common. Some countries call it all cilantro, some countries call it all coriander, and of course, many countries have their own words for it in their own languages. But three pounds, or no, two pounds of carrots, peeled and cut into chunks, salt to taste, sugar, which is optional, one half to one cup, finely chopped coriander or cilantro leaves, and stems. She specifies you have to add the stems. One a lot of a lot of like American or European recipes will tell you to omit the stems. Um, one quarter to one half cup chopped fresh chives or mint. I have mint. And I'm not sure if I have chives, but I know I have like some like scallions or something, and you can use like the stems of them or the stalks of them like like chives. So I could put that instead. One to two green chilies. You definitely have those. Juice of one. Lime or small lemon, I definitely have those. Um, wait, here's my lemon. I forgot to get it out. It's a big lemon, so maybe I should use half of it because she says to use a small lemon. Yogurt or creme fritche. Got the creme fritche. And I'd like to thank my friend that I've known for over 20 years that I knew when we both lived in New Jersey, who now works at the Arcata Co-op, for helping my boyfriend find this. Because when I said I need creme fritche for a recipe, he said, what did you just say? You're going to have to type that out and text it to me. And I said, okay, I'll text it to you. Show, my, show, show an employee your phone. I didn't know the employee was going to be my old friend who now works at the co-op. And then this is the best one. Chive or borage blossoms. So, um, the one thing not mentioned in this recipe is very, very, very important. I already mentioned it. When she says garnish with chive or borage blossoms, if you have them in your garden, right here, she does not mention the thing about taking this part off. And I actually saw a YouTube video about how to make mixed drinks with borage flowers in them, and the person who made the mixed drink with the borage flowers in them also did not take the spiny part off. Like, this will, like, like scrape your throat. Like, it won't, like, sting you, like, stinging nettle, but it won't be pleasant. And you'll try to, like, choke and gag and be like, nice mixed drink. Wow, this is a real weird hippie drink. Hippies make horrible drinks with bad flowers in them. Yuck, I'm not going to do this again. But if you eat that part alone, you'd say, oh, wow, this is delicious. It tastes like, like a cucumber. The, the chef is an amazing gourmet chef. The hippie that gave this to me is an amazing gourmet chef. I didn't know hippies could make an amazing gourmet drink by just throwing a flower into some liquor with juice in it. Because that's basically how you do it. You put this flower into some liquor with juice in it. I, I made another video about this, but the video has a lot of clips, and I'm right now currently only recording completely unedited clips or videos, you know, recorded all in one clip or all in one take. But, yeah, you can you know, taste slightly like cucumber with a slight mild sweetness. You can garnish your mixed drink with it. You can garnish your salad with it. You can set them floating in a pot of soup right seconds before serving it so where there's like floating flowers in your soup that not only are beautiful but add a taste to it. You could put them into jello. This is one of the things I was going to do. I was going to make like jello cubes with the the clear kosher fish gelatin I showed you in another video with like one borage flower floating each one. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can make candied borage flowers. So this is borage. And by the way, um, if you grow this plant, 
it, you can also use the seeds, by the way. Um, the seeds are high in omega-3 fatty acid and like, like flax seed oil or hemp seed oil. Some people take it as a medicinal oil. Some people also make a tea and you can eat the leaves, but I recommend cooking them because they're spiny. Um, but you can't eat the leaves. And um, the tea is very good. I mean, you can make the tea out of like the whole plant. You don't have to like take off the spiny part. Um, um, I don't know if there's anything else I need to say about borage, but yeah, um, there's a lot of things you can do with it, and it's been used um, by European people for thousands of years, possibly even tens of thousands of years. It may predate. Um, its use may predate the evolution of Homo sapiens. I love plants that um, were used before Homo sapiens evolved, and this is one of them. And it is in this traditional cookbook. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting. I thought it was interesting when it said chive or borage blossoms for garnish and to use them if you have them in your garden. It's like the author of this book that goes into so much detail about how they cook food in their traditional cuisine just Assumes you know what borage blossoms are. It's, it's just so interesting. It's so interesting. It's like the old cookbooks just like explaining in detail what a dandelion is, but assuming you know what nettles are. It's just so interesting. I like the old cookbooks. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to be making um, carrot and fresh coriander soup. And oh yeah, because the neighbor is growing um, coriander or cilantro, we have some, but it's going to seed, and that means it's producing coriander, like the, the seed, but it's covered in spider mites, because we live in Humboldt County, and everything here is covered in spider mites, and they um have spread to my yard, and they are on everything. So we're going to have to spray, like, neem or something organic, or something, I don't know, I, I don't know, there, there's a way you can, like, cut down a plant and hang it upside down and the spider mites like crawl up to the top because they normally live on tops of plants and crawl off of it but they can leave behind like contaminants like you can't sell marijuana with um spider mite residues like their poop to dispensaries because it can be contaminated and people don't want to smoke like spider mite poop and it also makes the marijuana crackle while you're smoking it so if you've ever lit a joint and it went crackle crackles pop pop well, now you know why we were smoking bugs or bug poop. Um, <laughs> with that said, I'm now going to end this video and start getting ready to cook. And since no one has come back from the neighbor's house like a few blocks away with any cilantro yet, I'm going to have to make a phone call before I can start to cook. I guess I should see what's in this bag before I make a phone call because this is all... Let me move my books. Stuff from the... Farmer's market. There's now a cow. Oh no, the magnet's not sticking. Oh, the magnet is sticking. Oh, my goodness. Um, my boyfriend purchased today. We have onions. Onions. Small onions. Cucumbers that are, oh god, probably overripe. Let me see that. Uh, I don't know. And little eggplants. Oh, that's cute. You never want to make something with those. A whole bag of these things. I'm just showing you like one of each. When you use these, you really have to like peel all this back or like cut the top off. But it's it, the part under this is still good. Um, and uh, quick neck zucchini or what do they call this kind of zucchini? It's some kind of zucchini. They're really hard. Like, twice the hardness of, like, a store-bought normal zucchini. And more zucchini, and oh my god, what's that? <laughs> wow. We have the big tomato! Look at that. Huge tomato. So big it's breaking, which means some of it will not be good, but at least you got a big tomato. And these. I do not know how spicy they are. I have some of them serrano chilies, like like green chilies that are like this but a little straighter. A few of them are curved. I used one of the curved ones to be silly in my video yesterday. Um, 
What else do we have? Some shiitake mushrooms. And you get them fresh. They're much softer than the dried ones you have to rehydrate, but they're still very much firmer than almost any other type of mushroom I've cooked. I like to slice them like paper thin, like the way you would slice them on a mandolin, but because I don't have a mandolin, I do it with a knife. So that is it. And I guess there's one more thing I have, and it is peanut butter. It's fresh ground. At the Arcata Co-op, they have this machine that's full of peanuts, and you like turn this crank, and it grinds it up fresh into a container, and you pay for it by the weight. So there it is. That is it. That's all. Um, that's all. I'm going to show you in this video um, before I end it. This video is now ending. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this interesting um, mixture of everything. And I oh, was sorry for having the Safeway Cola. But it's um necessary. Like I don't really drink soda, but when I do, I usually drink like an off brand of soda, like a store brand of soda. I know Safeway isn't the best corporation, but at least they aren't like Coca Cola or something, because you know Coke is the drink of the death squads. Definitely listen to David Rovick's song, Drink of the Death Squads, about how the Coca-Cola Corporation had their labor union workers assassinated and gave the assassins Coca-Cola as a bonus, plus their payment. And um, another interesting story is when I first arrived in Humboldt County, I'm not sure how long after I arrived it was, but one of the Actually, the very first concert I went to, I think, was David Rovix, this guy, the Coke is the Drink of the Death Squads guy, at the um, one-room schoolhouse in Braceland, near Whitethorn, with Murray, who used to be in my old videos. He said, do you want to go to a concert? It's at a one-room schoolhouse. I said yes, and it was David Rovix, and he played this song and some other songs with controversial lyrics. <laughs> Look at this. I actually have like all these tabs open. These are the tabs that I had to open to research this video. I've got David Rovix and two different um, brands of shirts and SpongeBob SquarePants and the lyrics to a SpongeBob SquarePants song and um this dress, the tab for this dress, which is eleven dollars, not um like almost twenty dollars or twenty dollars like the other one. How to pronounce creme French and I didn't even show you the lyrics to SpongeBob SquarePants because I noticed something funny about the page. Because you know I can read some Russian and where it says song there, that letter is the Russian letter for P. Like that thing that looks like a box with the bottom missing is the Russian P. And that's just weird. That's weird. I think that's weird. Alright, so now I'm really ending this video. Please like this video, share this video, watch my other videos, subscribe to my channel. I have been standing here recording for 38 minutes and 46, 7, going on 8 seconds. So far, it is 7.38 p.m. Um, the date is August 5th, 2023. And if you want to be a YouTuber, all you have to do at this point, is stand there with your phone and record. If you don't want to do it all in one clip, a lot of modern phones have programs either built in or that you can download to join clips together. I am, for reasons I don't want to go into, not doing that because that takes a lot of time and involves re-watching your video more times than just recording it all in one single clip does. So right now I'm only recording single clips and uploading them and stating the time and date if possible in the video and if not in the video description. Bye, people.